Hello, people of the internet and audiophiles everywhere. Today we're going to talk about this. This is the project, or project. I say a project because it has a hyphen. And that makes me think it's pro-inject, but it might be project. I don't know that project is a good name for a company. Project sounds a little bit better. But I digress. This is a phono preamp. It does moving magnet and moving coil cartridges. Low, medium, high, whatever. It's got a lot of options. It doesn't have all the options I would like. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's got a lot of options. It has a nice little soft touch button. There's a little tiny LED light that lights up when you turn it on. It has these two protuberances at the top. What are those? These are loose because I was changing these out. But what are these? That's called the tube box, bro. Get with it. And how you change the tubes, you take off this and you have some like Legos. Now you have a problem because this is it's totally easy to lose. And it has all of these little parts and pieces. Don't lose those. That's something that I would do. Don't be like me. Then it has two 12AX7s here. These are JJ's. I believe it comes with tongue soles. I don't know, I bought this used, so it did not have tongue soles in it. Um, currently has JJ tubes. You have a bunch of loading options. And you have some capacitance settings. And you have your gain settings. So your gain options are 41 dB, that would be for moving magnet, 40, uh, 51, which would be for low or high output moving coil, and then if you turn them both on, you're at 61 dB, and that is for your moving coil. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to see what's going on down there. But you have loading options of 10, 100, 1,000, 2,000. And then you have also 200 picofarad, 100 picofarad capacitance to select from. You have in, out, grounding, and an 18 volt power supply. Let's talk about this stuff. So, if you saw my Shiite Manny review, I go into why I don't like that. Because of the way their dip switches are not intuitive. This has a similar, different issue, but an issue nonetheless. So, something like this it has dip switches, completely intuitive. It has 1K, and next to the 1K is very easy to see where you change it. On, you turn them both on. Both of them off is off. This doesn't make sense. I am relatively intelligent. I could not figure this out. So rather than waste hours of my life, I wasted 10 minutes and then went to the manual. And the manual is even more confusing. I'm going to show you some of the manual here. And let me explain to you where the confusion is. And it actually has it here, too, where we have this black part and white. And then these are white, right? The dip switches are white. So you would assume, at least I assumed, that where it's showing you the black part is the off, and then this is turning it that way is on. It's not it. It's the inverse. The black is actually the dip switch. 
I had to, I, it, that took me some time to wrap my mind around. It's still kind of confusing when I look at it, I'm not going to lie, because my eye believes the white to be the white tip switch. It's not it. It's kind of stupid. Another part of the manual that I didn't like, that I have to assume, is correct in its leaving it out is that so for these for the the gain and the capacitance it, turning some of them on and some of them off create different um different values but that doesn't appear to be true for the resistor resistance on this lo the loading option which is kind of weird because it goes from 10 to 100 to 1,000, like no step in between. You can't get to 200. You can't get to 470. I don't know. I, it would be nice if, like, if you turn both of these on, like 100 and 1,000, and you got to, like, 500 or something. If, if that's the way it works, it's not entirely understood by the man from the manual. I don't know. Whatever. So... Either that should be more clear, or that should be the way it works, because I want more options than 100 and 1,000. That's just me, because my cartridge prefers it to not be that. 100 or 1,000, it prefers something in between. So, I plug this into my moving coil system, which is a... A VPI Scout into a Denon DL 301 MK2 low output moving coil cartridge, usually into a Hagerman Bugle 2 that I modified to work with the Denon into the Noob Sound uh, preamp that there's a video for. Uh, into the Shiite Vidar, which there's a video for, into Keth R300 speakers, which there is no video for, and will probably never be a video for them. So don't look for it, at least not from me. They don't even make them anymore. So it's been replaced with the R3, which look relatively the same, but look a little in terms of specs, but who cares? We're not talking about that. We're talking about this, this guy. So, I tried this with both 100 and 1000 ohm on my moving, ca moving coil cartridge system. And with 100, you get real punchy bass. You kind of have a narrowish sound stage. The coherence is good, which is what I refer to when you're listening to some records on lower end uh, phono preamps. Everything kind of gets blurry and, and hazy, and you can't really hear everything. I would say, for most people, this thing runs 400 bucks. That is not low end. In terms of, like, audio, like, that's super low end. But, you know, you do you. Whatever you, whatever you think is high end, low end. I would say 400 bucks is a lot of money. I mean... I mean, there's better stuff out there for sure. But, I mean, you're getting something solid. This is solidly built. It's made in uh, the Czech Republic. I don't know that I have anything else made in the Czech Republic. I guess if I owned other project things, they'd be made in the Czech Republic too. So it's nice that it's not made in China and it's $400. But... So on the 1,000 load everything the sound stage opens up the highs are a little eh, not a little little a little rough um for me i'm i don't like my highs really detailed and it gets a bit more detailed than i would like on the 1000 you lose the bass punch everything expands and relaxes so you have a different sound which one i would prefer if i was going to run this in my system which i am not uh, it would probably be the 100. That's just me. So, I also tried this in the moving magnet system that I, 
I have available to me. I sometimes say it's mine. It's not mine. It's my son's. It is moving magnet. It is a Fluence RT RT what RT eighty two, which has an Ortofon or Ortofon, depending on which way you want to pronounce that. Since every almost every video has uh, a name that I can't pronounce, Project Ortofon Ortofon. Um, noob sound, knob sound. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on here that I don't know. The and I know that Shiite isn't pronounced Shiite, but I don't want the uh, YouTube people to come down on me and say, "Hey, stop swearing." It's not good for the community. I want to make nice videos that you can watch with uh, your kids if you really want to bore the crap out of your kids. If you hate your kids and you want them to hate you back, make them watch my videos. Like, this guy with this annoying voice, horrible. I don't care about funnel preamps. And they wouldn't be wrong. Where was I? Oh, the moving the moving magnet system, Ortofon OM10. That gets plugged into an Emotiva TA100 integrated amp that has a built-in photo preamp. That sounds pretty decent. Uh, that gets, then that integrator gets plugged into Cambridge Audio Minx XL speakers. Now, I should be, let it be known that, in my opinion, that system run that way sounds okay. Sounds maybe even good. Doesn't sound great. Does not sound great. Um... And that could be, I kind of thought that that was due to the speakers. I thought that was sort of the low point in that system. And I actually have found that as I've put a lot of different preamps into that system that I had expected, um, or not expected, suspected. That, that's probably the work that sounds like that that I was going for. Suspected that the weak link was the, the speakers and not the phono preamp because while most things that I plugged into it sounded better, it wasn't substantially better. So when I plugged this in, I was blown away how substantially better this sounds in that system. It was incredible. It sounded vivid, it sounded real, it sounded tube-like, it sounded three-dimensional, the coherence was fantastic. I was blown away. Um, it's just night and day better, like not even close. It just sounded great. And I could not believe it, frankly. Um, I am really happy that my son wasn't paying attention because if he was, you would probably want to keep this thing. Um, whereas I would like to sell it because I'm not gonna run this in my system and he's fine with the built-in. But man, oh man, this and that system, it went from sounding good to fantastic, to like, holy crap, I'd like to listen to this system. Um, shocking. For $400, or if you can get this used for around 200, 250, I don't know. Man, it sounds good. So we should probably also talk about tube rolling. If you're not familiar with tubes, tube rolling is when you take different preamp tubes and you try them and see how they sound because guess what? In case being an audiophile and gear wasn't annoying enough, every tube sounds a little bit different. So as I stated previously, this originally shipped with tongue soles, I believe. It may have not. I don't have those to test. I don't have any in my my bag of tubes, what it came with from, um, or what I had gotten with it were the Genelix Gold Lion Gold Pin 12AX7s. And those to me sounded the best by far. Maybe not by far because my second favorite would, were these JJs and these things sound really good. Um, almost as good as the Gold Lions, except these you could probably get for $15 a piece, and those Gold Lions 
I saw them, they were almost 50 bucks a piece, which is crazy. Um, if I were keeping this, I would just run these JJs in it because the difference wasn't that substantial, at least not to pay that kind of money. Um, I also tried Mullard reissues, did not like the sound of those. I tried um, Chinese made tubes, which I normally like the sound of. Uh, I didn't like it in this. Really, the, the JJ sound fantastic. The Gold Lions sound better, but not tons better. Um, I mean, there's other stuff. There's electroharmonics tubes that you could try that I don't have available to me. At least not two of them. Um, you know, there's a tongue soul. There's other stuff you can try, but those out of the ones that I've tried, those sounded the best. I even tried some new old stock Mullards. Um, I didn't like those as much as the JJs, which is shocking because those are really good sounding 12AX7s. So, should you buy this? I think maybe. Depends on your system. If you can buy this on Amazon and then try it out with your system and see if it blows you away, it might be worth it um, because then you can return it. Like I'm going to do with this guy. This guy's going back to Amazon. I think that most people are really going to dig this in their system. If it's a moving magnet system, it's going to sound fantastic, especially with some JJs. Um, is it worth $400? Um, man, it depends on your, your setup, right? Like if you have... $100 speakers, which the Cambridge are not $100 speakers. I don't remember what they were. I bought them used as I buy most things. Um, but if you if you have really low-end speakers, I would recommend putting $400 in the speakers before I put money into this. If you have good speakers, you have a decent turntable, uh, and a decent integrated or even um, maybe an integrated without a phono preamp and you have a lower end, lower than this, um, I would grab this. If this is like, if you, that's the one low point in your system, this will absolutely make it better. Good job, Project. Not with your manual so much. But man, for moving magnet, this sounded fantastic. Have a good day.